please welcome my favorite convert, John Kasich. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Joy. I love the view. You know, I love the view. And you, yeah. too. Okay, thank you. So, so um, Governor, you are a lifelong Republican, and therefore you shocked a lot of people when you decided to speak at the National, uh, the Democratic National Convention a few uh, weeks ago. Why, why did you want to do that? Tell us what's going on with you. It's, it's a matter of conscience, and I know, Joy, the many times I've been on the show, I've, I've said that this fighting, this infighting, this division is just not acceptable in our country. And the Republican Party, by the way, has always been my vehicle. It's never been my master. So there's no surprise here. It's not like I'm in a new swim lane. I spent a lot of time negotiating, for example, the balanced budget with Democrats uh, and Bill Clinton and got that done and helped our country. This is a time when I believe we need, the division's got to stop. I mean, you guys are just covering the, the booing at a football game. I mean, we can't have this going on anymore. And I believe that Joe Biden has the right. kind of temperament to bring people to the table. He's not a my way or the highway kind of guy. And, uh, you know, I don't agree with him on everything. But the matter is, let's get people together, sit around a table and figure out some of our big problems. Yeah. Four years okay. ago, uh, you wrote in Senator McCain on your ballot instead of voting for Trump or Hillary Clinton. Now, there are many Republican voters who feel the same way this year. They don't want to vote for Trump, but also can't really see themselves voting for a Democrat. What's your message to these people? <laughs> what? Well, how did we get to this point? Where, what is this, a football game that I sit on one side of the field and you sit on another? We're Americans before we're anything else. And if you feel that four more years down this path, uh, of disruption and division is okay. I, I can't help you there. But if you believe that we need to have a restart, that we need to calm things down, we need to get together, not just politicians, but the people, then I think you have to vote for Biden. You have to do that. And just sitting it out or casting a vote for, you know, whoever you care about, that's not going to get it done. And so I have concluded that it is most important for me to be able to give space to people and, and permission to some degree to people who, who are sitting there saying, well, you know, I've been a Republican or vice versa. I've been a Democrat. It's time that we get away from those party labels. It's the 21st century. We've got to vote for the person and for those people who are going to lift our country, not people who are going to divide it. Well, Governor, you faced some criticism after your DNC speech. Uh, Chris Christie <laughs> said you were untruthful and a backstabber and then said your endorsement would mean zero. Uh, Trump also told reporters that you were, quote, a loser and a Republican and will be an even greater loser as a Democrat. Um, how do you respond <laughs> to these comments? Yeah, well, uh, first of all, I, I don't pay any attention to them. Uh, Look, I've been a Republican all my life and a conservative, uh, but, you know, I'm a little different. Out here in Ohio, we balance budgets. I left $3 billion for the guy that came after me in our rainy day fund, but I also expanded Medicaid so that 600,000, 700,000 people could have access to health care, mental health treatment, addiction services. So I'm a different kind of a Republican from what we see today. I'm still a Republican. I'm still a conservative. Government is as, not as a first resort as a last resort, but government is not the enemy, and sometimes we need it. So, look, I'm living here in the 21st century, and I'm concerned about the environment. I'm concerned about race. I'm concerned about the gulf between the rich and poor. I'm concerned about the debt that these people seem to have forgotten about. So, you know, my job is to try to carve out a new path for the way that Republicans want to go, and I'm being joined by a, a significant number of them. And I'm glad I was, I was out there and being able to do these things. But uh, there's, there's others that kind of share my feelings. And that will be the debate in the future of the party. Are we for things or are we against things? Do we have great ideas? Or are we willing to have no ideas? That's the question. Uh, Governor, I actually have been looking forward to having you on to ask this question because uh, you, you know my family. I was raised with a certain set of values and principles, and I was raised conservative. I've only gotten more conservative as I've gotten older. I'm almost nine months pregnant, and I feel like the stakes are incredibly high. I hate President yeah. Trump. I think everyone knows that. But there are some policies on the left, specifically with Senator, uh, excuse me, with Senator Kamala Harris right now, having to do with abortion. She co-sponsored a bill opposing any limits at all when you can get 
get an abortion. And it's a big break from Joe Biden's past positions. And the Biden-Harris campaign is also running on taxpayer funding for abortions. I was surprised at this, yeah. including those after 20 weeks. You're pro-life. I know that. And you were pro-life when you were in politics, as am I. It's a big, big part of who I am and my platform. And I don't think taxpayers should be funding abortions for women who are as pregnant as I am right now. So how would you push back against a voter like me who's concerned about things like this in a possible Biden-Kamala administration? Yeah, I, I agree with your position on the life issue, Megan. But look, uh, again, I'm not a person. First of all, I disagree with, with Joe Biden in a number of areas. I don't like you know some of what he's talking about in terms of capital gains taxes. I, but the issues here are dwarfed, in my opinion, by the fact that he's a person that can pull us together. So do I think that if he wins, that all of a sudden all these things are going to happen that are negative? No, I don't believe that at all, because that's not his character. That's not who he is. And as you know, I mean, I, I don't really want to get, I hope this is appropriate for me to say, mm -hmm. as you know, your father and Joe were great friends. Why? Yes. Not because they agreed on everything, but they could find common ground. So do I think we're going to end up in some cataclysmic place if he wins? I don't. But I do believe four more years of this division is wrecking the very soul of our country. And we continue down this path. I don't know how we come back. Except, mm -hmm. by the way, uh, I would encourage people to look at what I wrote on USA Today about the power of faith. Franklin Roosevelt, Link, uh, Lincoln himself, called on the power of God to help the American people to overcome crises. That is part of how we're going to overcome this division, with the inspiration from our Creator animating individuals to wake up to what's happening in this country. Well, John, I'm glad you'll bring up God, because God knows I think the Republican Party needs prayer right now. And I, I want to ask you <laughs> something that I ask myself. Um, where do you see yourself in the Republican Party? Will you remain a Republican if Trump wins another four years? And what do you think the long-term effect or damage, in my view, to the Republican Party of Trump presidency, of Trump leadership is? Will, will this fever pass? Well, you know, there are other Republicans like Christy Whitman. You saw that, uh, that Senator Flake, uh, my dear friend Bill Kristol, there are a number of us, Anna Navarro, these are people who say that we can become a party of ideas, a party of excitement, a party of opportunity. If we don't become that, then it's going to cause us all to think a lot about things. So we're going to just have to see if there's just going to be a Republican, a Democrat, or perhaps at some point, a third party. We'll see. It's up to the parties okay. to determine this. Well, thank you, uh, Governor. It's always a pleasure to see you. Keep going. Great. You're doing wonderful work.